Hello, welcome to number seven, Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermon that is called Threefold Shame. Threefold Shame is a strategic attack that Satan uses to defeat the body of Christ and to stop people from coming to Jesus Christ in general. The first type of shame that I want to talk about is the shame to come to God because of sin. See, the devil will tell people that because they're still drinking, because they're still doing drugs, that they're not worthy to come to Jesus Christ. And the truth is, is that that is partly true, but not wholly true. Nobody is worthy. We all fall short from the glory of God. And we are supposed to feel convicted for the sin that we do, but we should never feel convicted or shameful to the point that this shame prevents us from being forgiven by Jesus Christ. And there are a lot of people that will come to me and tell me, I would love to go to church, but I'm still drinking. I would love to go to church, but I'm still in fornication and adultery. And as Christians, we need to tell them that they need to come to church anyways, because there's no chance of them ever doing the right thing if they try to do it on their own. If we could do the right thing on our own, we wouldn't need God. If we could do the right thing on our own, we wouldn't need church. If we could do the right thing on our own, we wouldn't need the Bible. But the truth is that on our own, we're miserable wretches and we're going to get beat up from all angles. That's why Jesus said, when two or more gather, there I am. The first Bible verse that I would like to read is in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says, There is therefore no, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, the Bible verse says that there's no condemnation. See, the devil tries to condemn us to the point that we are overtooken by the emotion of shame. Condemnation is is a permanent thing. When someone says you're condemned to a prison, that means you're not getting out. If someone says you're convicted to a certain sentence, that's a temporal thing. A conviction is temporal. Condemnation is permanent. And that's what the devil wants to do is permanently keep people in shame from coming to Jesus Christ. There was a time after I became a Christian that the devil would use some of my family members and they would bring up my past sins from 10 to 15 years ago. And what I would do is I would say, yes, I remember exactly what sin you're talking about. That evil, wicked, no good sin. I know exactly which one you're talking about. That's the exact same sin that Jesus Christ died for. That's the exact same sin that I pled the blood of Jesus Christ over and I'm now forgiven for it. See, I don't believe that that person was a demon or that person was the devil, but I believe that person was strongly influenced by the devil. And I believe that when the devil reminds you of your past, you need to remind the devil of his future. The next type of shame that I want to talk about is... Christians who have been forgiven of their sins. The shame to tell your testimony because you're not free or healed. There are people that I know who have a powerful testimony, but they're ashamed to give it. It's because there is somewhere in their life that they're not yet completely healed, or there's somewhere in their life where they're continuing in a sin. And the devil will use a rooted memory of past hurts to keep you from giving your testimony. Or the devil will use a sin that you're still involved in to keep you from giving your testimony of what Jesus Christ did. He will use all these tricks and play all these games and work with these different types of shame. And I want to say that I've learned that When I give my shameful testimony, and I have a very, very shameful testimony, and when I say that, I mean all the things that God has brought me out of. God has brought me through many, many shameful things and delivered me from many shameful things. And when I go ahead and tell them to other people, I notice that they'll open up and they'll start becoming honest and they'll start telling me the things that they're were in or the things that they're now in. And so now we'll have an opportunity to pray for them and put the blood of Jesus Christ over them. We're going to read uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. And it says, Confess your faults before one another and pray for one another. It doesn't say that you have to confess your fault to one another to be forgiven. No, it says, Confess your fault to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. See, this is what happens. 
This is what happens. We go to church and we put on our best suit and we put on this acting and this fake mask and we act like we're so perfect that we spiritually intimidate one another. And because we're putting on this fake uh, acting face and we lie, we lie to one another by doing this. And what happens is when we do that, we stop other people from being liberated, from feeling spiritually free and comfortable around one another to be able to tell the truth. That when they are battling with something, when they are involved in something, they won't mention it because you don't mention it. And if I mention it, then they'll start to mention it. And the devil will play all these games to stop us from telling about the shameful things that we've been involved in or that we were involved in. We're going to read Revelations chapter 12. Verse 11. And I don't want you to think that I'm saying that I'm condoning sin or that sin is okay. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we need to be real with one another. Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. And it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Notice it doesn't just say he overcame him by the blood of the lamb. It says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And you're not going to overcome the devil by yourself. It's going to be they, more than one, plural. They overcame him. And you're not going to overcome the devil with anything other than the blood of the lamb. I don't care if you use psychology. I don't care if you use wisdom and logic, intelligence on all the power and might that you have. You're just flat out not going to overcome nothing without the blood of Jesus Christ. The next shame that I'm going to talk about that the devil uses is a shame to mention that you're a Christian because of possible rejection. See, even after you came to Jesus Christ and you overcame the shame of sin, even after you overcame the shame to give your testimony, what happens after you leave the church? What happens after you leave the household of God? Are you still ashamed to mention to other people that you love Jesus Christ? Are you still ashamed to tell other people about your testimony outside of the house of God? When you go to your work, when you go to school, when you go to the grocery store, are you free to overcome the shame of knowing who Jesus Christ is? Because the devil will give you a shame that if you mention to anyone that you love Jesus Christ, they're going to reject you, they're going to persecute you, and that may not even be true. And I want to tell you that I've been guilty of this myself. There was a time where I took a speech class and I never told anyone that I was a Christian. I never mentioned my testimony. I never mentioned the Bible. I didn't even mention Jesus Christ. And there was this little Croatian lady that got up and she gave a five minute speech about being a Christian. And after she got done, I felt so ashamed. She did such a wonderful job, but she had the boldness of a lion. And do we have that same boldness of a lion that even if we don't know other people are Christians or hold the same belief as us, do we have that same freedom and that liberty to tell people about Jesus Christ? I want to read Mark chapter 14, verse 71. But he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man who you speak of. Look at Peter. Peter was so bold that he took out his sword and cut off someone's ear. He told Jesus, I'll never deny you. Jesus, or Peter was so bold as a lion as long as he was around Jesus Christ, as long as he was around people that believed like him. But the moment that he stepped away from other believers and went out amongst the world, he denied Jesus Christ even to a little girl, a little girl. And I want to tell you that at some point in time, we take on the same type of shame and the devil loves it. He wants us to be ashamed to admit our love for Jesus Christ and fear of rejection. And I want to tell you, ignore the shame, despise the shame. Don't worry about what the devil makes you feel like or what he makes you think. Go ahead and give yourself to the body of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and give yourself to the love of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and testify of the things that God has brought you for, no matter what. Even if they do reject you, go ahead and do it anyways. God bless you and overcome the threefold shame by the power of Jesus Christ.